we received a whistleblower communication. The university was starting up its maternal deprivation work again. Tonight, growing controversy in America over primate experimentation in general. There have been repeated attempts, for example, to pass the Great Ape Protection Act that would essentially ban research on great apes. And recently, a committee of the well-respected Institute of Medicine concluded most chimp experiments are now unnecessary. The video you're looking at gives you a glimpse into what we're talking about. It's the issue of primates used for experiments in labs. But this video is not of the specific experiments at the University of Wisconsin-Madison that had some outrage. There, baby monkeys are being separated from their mothers right after birth and later reportedly subjected to scary tests to provoke fear and anxiety. And then they're killed and dissected and their brains are studied. We'd be happy to show you that video, but the university declined to provide it. Now, look, everybody knows I'm an animal advocate, but tonight my role is to moderate our debate. On one side, Eric Sandgren, director of the Animal Research Animal Resources Center at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, where the baby monkey experiments are being done. On the other side, Rick Vogel of Madison, Wisconsin's Alliance for Animals, who has organized a campaign to stop these experiments, asking alumni at UW-Madison not to donate to the university until these monkey experiments are stopped. So, Eric, let's begin with you. Tell us why you're doing these experiments, what's being done to these baby monkeys, how many are being used. All right, thanks. I'd like to start by talking about the procedure, which seems to be so controversial. And um, in, in many cases in the laboratory, and even in the wild for that matter, a mother monkey will reject its baby. And when that happens in the wild, it will probably die. In the laboratory, we try not to let that happen. We will give it to a foster mother. If there is not a foster mother available, then we raise it in the nursery, just as you'd raise a baby kitten if the, if the mother wasn't available. Um, the animal's raised in a nursery until it can regulate its own temperature, and then it's housed with another young monkey. Um, and that happens anywhere from three to six weeks of age. And it stays with that monkey for the rest of its life. So that is the experimental procedure that's being used in this case. It's not as good for the offspring as being raised with a, monkey, with a mother, but it's really not any different than something that's used as part of standard husbandry when a mother rejects its baby. To us, that does not seem so severe. Uh, Rick, why have you organized this campaign to stop these baby monkey experiments? Well, this sort of um, procedure hasn't been used at the research at the, at the University of Wisconsin basically since the days of Harry Harlow. Um, I think that one thing that Dr. Sangerman said wasn't quite accurate. When this study came up for review in front of the oversight committees, two of the committees, um, members of the committees spoke out in alarm and said that they considered that this was a severe thing to be doing to these baby monkeys. So to say that this is no different than just normal laboratory practices is really misleading. Um, the, we know that monkeys that are infant monkeys that are taken away from their parents, from their mothers, can start self-biting, self-mutilating within 35 days. There, some of these monkeys are going to be left isolated totally alone for up to 42 days. Um, we think that probably by the time they start biting themselves, they've already been severely um, traumatized and stressed. So, And then they're going to take them over the next year, and they're going to frighten them um, repeatedly. So we think that there's no reason to be doing this. The people we've talked to, the experts in the Pediatric psychiatrists say that this has no no likelihood of helping children at all. Um, in this oh. University of Wisconsin Madison document, and I'm quoting uh, the what does it say here? Uh, protocol review. At birth, this is a quote. At birth, infants will be removed from their mothers and placed immediately in an incubator with a surrogate, stuffed animal, towel, and or blankets. It says infants will form attachment bonds to these items which provide contact comfort as early as day one of life. Now, uh, Matt Rosell of Animal Defenders International has studied rhesus monkeys in laboratory situations, tells us a stuffed animal cannot replicate a mother's love, adding the worst form of torture for humans is isolation, and these primates suffer similarly. Eric, your response, and why? Okay, so this is not isolation. Isolation is when there is nothing else with the monkey. Isolation would uh, mean that there was not interaction with the animal caretakers that deal with it all the time. So it's not isolation. 
in that sense. The why, I think, is a very important question, and that has to do with the character of, uh, uh, of anxiety disorders in this country. 50 million people have anxiety disorders in this country. Those are adults. Generally, those develop very early in life, most of them uh, due to, to adverse events when the human individual is young. Also, there's a strong genetic component. If we want to treat this effectively, we have to understand how this comes about. In order to understand how it comes about, we can't just look at the behaviors. We have to understand the mechanisms. We have to understand right. if it's based. We're going to take a brief break. When we come back, we're going to talk about whether studying monkeys can help us with humans, whether it's apples and oranges, as some critics claim. Stay right there. This is Tim, number 16569. Depression, aggressive behavior, and self-mutilation are industry buzzwords that describe the behaviors of monkeys gone mad from isolation and boredom. Uh, that's uh, not the experiment that we're talking about, but we're giving you a sense of the generic issue of animal experimentation, particularly primates. Now, here's a clip from In Defense of Animals about a monkey being frightened by a tiny airplane as part of a scientific experiment. First, she sews a large piece of hardware a transmitter and heart monitor under the skin of their backs. Then these young monkeys are returned to their outdoor enclosure and Cameron's lab workers scare the monkeys by flying a remote control airplane overhead while monitoring their heart rates. Again, this video is not from the University of Wisconsin-Madison, but critics say it applies in that it's a primate being subjected to scare tactics and instead of tiny airplanes, UW-Madison is using snakes, live snakes, to instill fear. The Humane Society of the United States says it has, quote, deep concerns about maternal deprivation experiments on monkeys, including those being conducted at the University of Wisconsin for decades. We have seen the purposeful suffering inflicted upon animals in this type of research and at enormous cost to taxpayers. It's time to move away from these experiments and spend our money on better research so that we can truly address anxiety and depression in our children. Eric. Uh, maternal deprivation of monkeys was reportedly done at your university many decades ago, and it was eventually stopped. Your response to critics who say you're going backwards. Mm -hmm. We're not at all going backwards. For one thing, this is not the kind of maternal, uh, maternal uh, changes that were, that were in, in effect a long time ago. This is a, a very much milder change. Um, it produces an increase in anxiety, but it doesn't interfere with the ability of the animals, for example, to interact with other monkeys and form social bonds. The key is the reason we're doing this, and the reason we're doing this is to find out what part of the brains are affected when uh, an individual is anxious, and to find out what chemicals in the brain are involved in that. Once we have that information, we can develop a rational treatment. That's how drugs work. They target chemicals in the brain or in other parts of the body. That's and, and the you, point. So it's very much moving okay. forward. Again, these photos are not of the experiment we're talking about. Um, these are other experiments involving rhesus monkeys. Uh, Rick Bogle, your response. Well, I think that Eric's just misleading you. I, the, uh, the idea that we're going to study the brains of monkeys and come up with some sort of magic pill that's going to solve the problems of that Dr. Kalin himself says he's trying to cure or prevent is just absurd. He says it's everything. It's sexual abuse, uh, physical abuse, neglect, poor parenting. His, the list of things that he says that this, these new molecular pathways that he claims he'll be able to discover and create a medication to treat are so far reaching that it would, anybody that looks at it, I think would just look, would just understand immediately that it's just, it's pie in the sky. On the other side of the Blake, on the other side of the break, final arguments. UW-Madison says it hopes to develop new treatments to deal with anxiety and depression that start in early childhood. Uh, critics say you're not going to gain any useful information from baby monkeys because it's apples to oranges that you cannot learn about human children being subjected to physical or sexual abuse or drug addiction or alcoholic parents or being sent to a foster home. Real world problems by taking uh, baby monkeys and scaring them with snakes. Um, Animal Defenders International says torturing baby monkeys is not going to benefit people. So I want to go to final arguments. Uh, let's start with Eric. What's your response to the, the critics that say these should be ended, these tests? 
Well, the, if they want to end them because they think they won't get, uh, allow us to learn anything, they're mistaken. Uh, the monkey and the human are very similar in this respect, and we've already learned a tremendous amount about human anxiety and its mechanisms. And actually, I think there's a very good possibility that this will allow us to come up with some sort of a magic bullet that can treat a large fraction of the anxiety in, in human patients in this population. And let's come back in 10 years and find out. Rick? So right now there's baby monkeys huddling in their small incubators. They're gonna be left there for weeks on end. And then ahead of them is just a year of being frightened, serial um, tests and spinal taps. And I hope people will get involved and call the university and go to the website and get involved and try to put an end to this once and for all. Uh, you've heard both sides. One thing I could say unequivocally Baby monkeys cannot speak for themselves. Uh, they are close to humans, but they are definitely not that close. Thank you, viewers, for participating in this important debate. It's something that we all need to think about.